Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. In this video we're going to go over hot surface igniters and how to troubleshoot them like a pro. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. In today's video we're going to be going over hot surface igniters and how to check them like a pro. Just a heads up, if you find this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week, and let's get straight into it. Hot surface igniters are most commonly used in electronic ignition systems. The two composition materials generally associated with hot surface igniters are silicon carbide and silicon nitride. The hot surface igniter shown here specifically is silicon carbide, which is a compound of carbon and silicon. This hot surface igniter here specifically is a proprietary ceramic composite, but it is very similar looking to the silicon nitride, which is a chemical compound of silicon and nitrogen. They are typically smaller and more durable. Regardless of the type of hot surface igniter you have, in this video, you're going to learn two different methods on how to troubleshoot them like a pro. The first method of troubleshooting we will be using today will be using resistance. This is not my preferred method, as you will learn later why in this video. But in this case, we're going to have the power off to the system and we're going to want to leave the hot surface igniter in the burner section. They are very delicate. Just pulling them out, you might damage them. With the power off, we're going to isolate the hot surface igniter by removing the wires. In this case, we have a connector, so we're just going to disconnect that so we can get to the two conductors so we can check resistance across the hot surface igniter. I'm using the Fluke 902FC HVAC clamp meter. We're going to set our meter to resistance. For my meter, it reads continuity and resistance at the same time. Rule of thumb is you want to read anywhere between 40 to 90 ohms across your hot surface igniter. This all changes when it comes to the voltage applied and the style that you have. That's why this method is not really my preferred because those numbers could change. I feel that the only reliable method here is if you get an OL reading or not. So. We're going to put our leads across these two terminals. I'm going to short out my leads to make sure they're good. And they are. So we're just going to simply check one and the other. We have an OL reading, and this indicates that this hot surface igniter is bad. If we look at the hot surface igniter itself, we can see a white mark. That is a big indication that it is faulty and it is broken. But if you look closely here, there is a break in this and 100% this is a faulty hot surface igniter and it must be replaced. Next, we're going to be checking a hot surface igniter that we know is 100% good as it is 100% brand new. If you look at the ceramic material, it is not discolored and is in shape. Have the meter set to ohms and resistance, simply going to short out the leads. We know we're good and we're just going to check across the two wires. As you can see, we have 507 ohms. So that 40 to 90 ohm rule does not apply here, even though this is a good hot surface igniter. Using resistance is not the best method as a different material or different voltage applied to that specific control will give you a different ohm reading. It's best to look up the specific model of hot surface igniter you have and see what the ohm reading should be. Depending on the type of hot surface igniter you have, it will give you a different ohm reading. Also, temperature plays a role in this. As the temperature of the hot surface igniter is higher, also the resistance will be higher. In this method, I typically really don't advise it. I only use it as reference if I have an OL reading. In that case, then we know what it is. But it's always important to check in with the manufacturer's ratings. Preferably, the best way and the way that I do it is by checking voltage. This here is my preferred method by checking voltage. So in this case, we'd have the power onto the system. Everything would be connected. We would find a place where we can connect our two leads from our meter so we can read voltage across the two conductors. So if we get the correct voltage applied to the hot surface igniter, it's important to look through 
in the burner section because it's usually a little area where you can actually see if we have a flame and in the same place you're going to see the hot surface igniter so if we get the correct voltage to the hot surface igniter and it doesn't glow then you know it's bad each hot surface igniter also has its own rating for amperage these do pull amps so once voltage is applied they should be pulling amps and it's best once again to check in with the manufacturer's ratings Long story short, the best way is by going to check to see if there's voltage first. So you're gonna wanna see if you have the applied voltage to the hot surface igniter and physically look to see if it glows. If it doesn't, the next thing I would do is put the meter to ohms and check across. If I have OL, then you already know it needs to be replaced. So if you have OL, then it needs to be replaced or if it's getting voltage and not pulling amps or glowing or doing anything, then once again, it needs to be replaced. Here you can see the elements for all three of these just completely broke off. So these constantly go bad. This is a very common issue and it's very important as a HVAC technician to understand how these work and how to check them. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.